Tonight, the opposition NDC mounts massive pressure on the Electoral Commission as it demands a fresh meeting of the Inter-Party Advisory Committee to resolve what it considers to be widespread irregularities and massive challenges, they say, throughout the just-ended voter registration exercise. We have summoned the Director of Elections of the party to query him on these matters and ask the EC if they will hear the call from the opposition party on our front. You welcome back. This is Upfront. My name is Raymond Darko, and tonight the NDC is asking the Electoral Commission to immediately and urgently convene an IPAC meeting. The agenda, single issue, to do with the just ended voter registration exercise. The party, the statement just issued not long ago, is insisting that there were massive and widespread irregularities recorded in ju just ended exercise, which is in the, going to go a long way to disenfranchise some Ghanaians who could not go up to the exercise. The NDC believes that according to the Ghana Statistical Service, so 1.7 two or so million Ghanaians were supposed to register, but the EC is reporting 1.2 million. What happens to the difference that's supposed to have been registered in this particular case? Those are the issues the NDC will answer tonight in our studios. When the EC joins us on the phone too, we'll be asking them when they will hear the call of the NDC. But we are lucky to have a former youth and sports minister, and also more importantly, the director of elections of the NDC, who just returned from Senegal. Elvis Sophia Anka, you're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. I hope you are doing well. Very well, by the grace of God. How was Senegal? Um, it was interesting. We landed on our way to the airport. Senegal won the match. And so <laughs> we saw thousands of people. I thought Ghanaians were soccer crazy, but the the Senegalese, Senegalese are, are, they, 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 they are in their own yes. right. And mm -hmm. uh, they were just marching on the streets, vehicles, I mean, 10 people in a car. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. It was incredible. I mean, you know, and we're hoping that this should have been Ghana, but hey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, since you brought in the football part, some, some, some of us started complaining about our coach because we crash landed out of the competition and uh, they insist Kwesi Apia must go. You believe that too? You see, um, when we went to Senegal, um, as we were driving along their roads and we we're looking at the quality of their roads, infrastructure, um, we were quite impressed. And the conversation centered around Ghana has gone very far in many ways. But the challenge with Ghana is that we're living on too much past glory. I see. So, first country to attain independence, first country to do that, first country to do that, first country to do that. So, we're living in that glory, past glory. So it's the same problem with our national team. I see. Past glory. We've won the cup four times, we've done this, we have great players, you know. But we're not dealing with the systemic challenges that confront us. So the problem of Ghana is manifested in the problem of the Black Stars. Oh, I see. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but you didn't answer the question. Should Chrissy Apia stay? I choose how I answer the <laughs> <laughs> Now, the I'm, I'm, give, I'm giving you the systemic problem yes you see can we fix the systemic problem with the nominalization committee's the, the, current oh, decision I, I i i think that what is the current decision the current decision is that to be fair kwesia pia must stay they've extended the stay in, in, in the in, in the position as coach that's normalization committee yes what have they normalized i think that when there's a crisis or a challenge you bring in an interim body yeah the interim body comes in to put things together they should quickly hand over to the football people irrespective of the issues that they had i mean you want football to develop in a sustainable manner you you call this a normalization committee that was supposed mm -hmm. to come in for a short period of time now they are almost becoming permanent so they must speed up the processes of the name means that they should come and normalize. There was an irregularity. Yeah. So come in and normal, normalize. If you do not, you yourself become an irregularity. You see? Have so you become an irregularity? They almost become an irregularity. They should just hurry up and allow the, the people, the stakeholders to, 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 to take over. As simple as that. I see. You know? And you don't think they have to decide on the coach before they leave the office? Well, that's entirely up to them. Whatever it is, is a fait accompli. You, you're telling me yeah. 
is being done already. That's what they say. Pia, Pia is a very nice guy. I, I, you know, he's a very sincere person. You know, um, in in Brazil, um, I saw somebody who was very focused on his job. But my particular challenge with him was when uh, that incident with um, Kevin, mm -hmm. when Kevin virtually insulted him yeah. at training. I thought that that was part of the problems that degenerated into mm -hmm. people beating people. That was the point where you should have walked that guy out of, oh, okay. of, of the camp. Then you stamp your authority. See, on the team. You, you understand me? Be because, you, you know, th there's a line that people should not cross. Mm -hmm. I was there. And, you know, open rudeness. Of course, being the person that he is, he felt that, well, forgive and... Uh, forget, but even Jesus at one point took a whip. Yeah. When people cross the nonsense line, you deal with them with nonsense. I see. So, so he, he should have done that, and I believe he would have saved all of us because then people wouldn't have been emboldened to, to now start beating things, yeah. people and we will not train. I mean, professional players say they won't train. I and see. then also, when the crisis came, <laughs> somebody will say it's because of me, but the point is that we focused on the individual, Elvis a free anchor, mm -hmm. prime targets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so of course, I, if if we had gone and we had won laurels, you could have been uh, praised. Of equal. course, so yes. when it happens, you take responsibility. So it's part of the game. But I think that in our excitement to crucify Elvis, we forgot that there were systemic structural matters that had to be dealt with. For example, the players refused to train. And why would they have and, and they took the money. Even what, though they refused to Yes. So what were the sanctions that the state of Ghana applied to them? So if you do that, you are encouraging a culture of impunity and the entitlement. Mm -hmm. and, and discipline. And discipline well, yeah. as well. So it grows. So you may have set up a commission and all that and all that and all that. But at the end of the day, the real problems. They, they were virtually treated with kid gloves at the commission, you know, uh, I was a target, primary target, then the secondary target, the actors themselves, they were left off the hook. So we need to do everything. We have the talent. Have we fixed the blasters? Have we? We have, we have the talent. And, and let me say this. I have been around footballers, you know, and please, they go through a lot. Wake up at dawn, especially those in Europe. Well, you know what it means to wake up at dawn in winter and run? And when you're training, when, when, when you get an injury in winter, it's more painful. Yeah. And the discipline, you know, your diet, sometimes they leave their wives. You, do you know that in professional football, when you're going to play crucial matches, you cannot even have sex with your wife? I see. Yes. That acts the, the high-level coaches. So that's the kind of sacrifice. So I'll be the last person to uh, denigrate players. But that also imposes on them a responsibility, especially when you're playing, you have the honor to be chosen to play for your country. Well, when the national anthem is being played, the national anthem is when the president, it will take the salute for the president. Yeah. Now that anthem is played for you. So it's a yeah. huge honor. So in as much as you're sacrificing for the country, you're also being honored, the highest honor. And it comes with a sense of responsibility. So if you want to deal with the problem, let's deal with it from the roots. In the team. Oh, yes. It's, it's a, a Ghana, you know, Trimode. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are sick of Trimode. That's our problem. Now, I want us to move on to the electoral commission. Good. Now, the NDC issued a statement, and let's be clear. Proud to the exercise, the voter registration exercise, the opposition party had consistently raised issues. Some of them including the erratic and inconsistent target set by the AC in relation to the projected number of uh, qualified voters. Of course, at some point in time, about 300,000, it moved to 500,000. Then they finally settled on 700,000. Now, there's a statement from one Dr. Kweku within the AC who says that 1.2 million is what was actually registered in this case. But you are insisting that the reliable statistical projection should have been 1.7 million. So... We went to IPAC, we asked the AC, what are your projections? He said 300,000. The second time we asked, he said 500,000. So we went to Statistical Service, we wrote. So, and they brought us, they responded, and they said it's 1.752 million. 
Ghanaian. So it's not conjecture. I see. And and it's something that the EC is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. In in 2014, the 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 the, the projection was one million mm -hmm. um, uh, voters for the limited registration, and they 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 were able to do um, about almost uh, 800 okay. thousand plus. And in 2016, the projection was 1.2 million, and they were able to do almost 90 percent, about 1.1 million. And so we went for the figures. And so when they were telling us that the, the, their target was one point, uh, was uh, 500, then eventually it came to 700,000. So we asked them, what is the basis of these projections? Because it should be, it should be based, it must have a statistical basis. Yeah. And they couldn't tell us. And so we knew that there was going to be trouble. And indeed, based on their own returns and our own returns, we're seeing that we, are actually, we actually did about 1.2 million. So okay. if you projected 700,000, you couldn't get your projections right, and you got 1.2 million, it, it should tell you that fundamentally there was a problem with your planning. And, and your projections. And your projections. Place. And yeah. we, we, we've been very consistent and insistent. And here we are, it came to play. Now the question to ask yourself is what happens to the uh, other 500,000 people that's, that have not that's been... That's about 30% of exactly, the people. Exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. that have not been registered. It's a legitimate question. Yeah. And this would be, you know, as I said, in 2014, they achieved over 80% of their targets. Mm -hmm. In 2016, they achieved over 90% of their targets. Yeah. Under this EC, when they did the limited registration in the 47 districts, their target was 100,000 and they achieved 47 percent. And this one too, their target was 700,000. But if you look at the overall numbers based on statistical service, yeah. then it means that they achieved less than 70 percent. Yeah, so, 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 so there's a challenge. And so when we raise the issues, we will plead, especially you in the media, that we are not crazy. We less. I keep telling people that when we bring the issues, don't look at it that it is NDC saying it or it's a, it's a free and crowd, a Sidon Ketia saying it. You yourself do your own research. When we stated that indeed we had gone to statistical service to go and ask, who went independently to statistical service to go and verify whether what we were saying was true or false? It helps the process, so it, it brings credibility. So, because we're talking about the national interest, the EC is funded by taxpayers' money. Whatever money they spend is our collective money that they are holding in trust for us. So we, we raise the issues not because we want to bother them, but there are legitimate issues and concerns. Another thing, they wanted to do the registration in 250 um, centers using the online. You remember that debate? Okay. Vehemently, for weeks on end, they insisted that they were going to do the online. We warned them that you cannot use that online for a mass registration system. Okay. Eventually, Almost reluctantly, they agreed to add some BVR equipment. The BVR equipment that they described as obsolete portmanteau equipment, and they, they had gotten parliamentary approval to repair them. They didn't repair them. Eventually, they agreed to, to they, they, they agreed to use some. Even in agreeing to use some, there was no transparent process where we could all sit at the table and determine that, okay, X amount is going to this region, X amount is going to region, based on some variables, population density, geographical spread, and all that. They did their own thing. And then they sent them out. These portmanteau equipment was eventually what saved us. Because based on the returns, it's only about 13.5 or so percent of the registrants that were registered on the, under the online system, the VMS mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So assuming we had kept quiet, as some people were saying, oh, you are troubling the EC, why are you raising issues? And we had not been consistent. And this fight, it took us almost a month for them to budge and shift that they were going to add some. You can imagine how this registration exercise would have gone. So that is another example to show that when we raise the issues, we have a legitimate basis to raise the issues, and we raise them based on our own experiences. We've been doing this for 1992. We've had experience with registration, elections. This is a new EC. So they should take their time and listen with an open heart and an open mind. Now, it's interesting that when the EC finally finished this exercise, they describe it as very successful. Indeed, it moved from largest successful to very successful, depending on who are the EC who are speaking to this particular issue. The conclusive of the end is that they've done what they expected to do and did more than even just that. So they are satisfied with the process. But you in this statement insist that there were challenges 
and irregularities during the exercise. Beyond the long queues, what other challenges were recorded? Um, I'm a bit surprised because your 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 network mm -hmm. actually reported so many many infractions. Yes. First of all, the long queues were not necessary because if they had listened to advice and deployed the BVR kits in the electoral areas as has been done in all the limited registrations, wouldn't have had those queues. And that is a dent on productivity, quality time, human time, man hours. That is spent, people spend a whole day in queues. Yeah. It will even affect people's health, affect people's health, the stand in the sun, rain, and all that. Again, you have a situation where there, were, there was chaos in so many instances. We have videos, chaos, fights, you know, Talks will come and come and start, you know, beating up people. It happened in Ho, it happened in Tamale, it happened in Udududu. All over the country, there were consistent reports. All these could have been better managed. If even with the number of equipment that they had, we had even zoned the country into zones. Okay. You, you deploy those equipment in a particular zone at the various electoral areas. So you cover more people in that zone. You finish, you move to another zone. You finish, you move to another. It would have been smoother. So you don't create a situation where you create inconvenience for Ghanaians. And after you create the inconvenience, you say that you are very much satisfied. And I'm saying that in previous registration exercises, the output has been, based on the statistical analysis, has been 80, between 80 and 90 percent. Okay. You score less than 70 percent, and you say you've done excellently well. No, they haven't. Now, what happened to these test con executives that you say were posing as EC officials who had been arrested? We, we just cited that as one example, but there are many, many examples of mm -hmm. people were arrested, handling by uh, equipment, people were arrested, having the documents, the, the, the return the forms, forms yeah. you know. So many people all across the country uh, were reported to the police. What we're saying is that those who are staff of the EC should be investigated and dealt with. Those that have been sent to the police station, they must be prosecuted and face the full rigors of the law so that these things do not recur. It's becoming one too many where common registration exercise. When we went to Senegal, I mean, we were surprised. They were telling us that even on election day, it was as if nothing was happening. On well, election day, people mm -hmm. get up, go and vote, come, very normal. Smooth process. Smooth. And in our country, Ghana, pride of Africa, when it's election, before elections, you see all kinds of NGOs and prayer groups springing up. You know, ye be woo, ye woo, ye mom payo, let us pray. Why should it be like that? We're just mm -hmm. going to vote mm -hmm. to choose our leaders. So, and these are the things that create the grounds. You see, when it happens during registration, then that apprehension goes into the main election. So when people are caught breaking the law, they must be dealt with. Let's prosecute people. Let's, let's send them to jail. So it will send a clear signal to everybody that these things are not tolerated. And it would even be in the interest of the EC themselves. Of because, course. I mean, it is possible. It adds the credibility of the Exactly. Anyway. Yeah, because some of these things that happen, I, I don't have any evidence to show that the EC at the top, Jim Mensah and co, told that guy to go and take an equipment and register. I don't have such evidence. Okay. But when they now ensure that action is taken against those who engage in those infractions, then everybody will have confidence. For example, they told us that um, they budgeted for uh, generators. Yeah. Um, um, for, for EC officials. And in the Volta region, the first four days or so, lights went off, no generators. The officers responsible should be sanctioned. We should find out what happened to that budgetary allocation. Why did they not provide the generators? These are things that will build confidence in the population. The machines and the failures that happen at, across the registration centers, were they not fixed? I thought we were told that either machines were replaced along the line of course, after some days or a day after or so in some of the registration areas, were they not fixed? No, they were not all fixed. Not all? Not all. So there were registration centers that still had problems with functioning machines? Oh, of course. And of course. For, 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 for example, um, I'll give you one clear case study. Whole West. Whole West, their district office, um, what's in Whole Central. Mm -hmm. And so... Because I, I hear they said when the district was created, they didn't have an office. So they cited it in whole central. And for about six days, there was no functioning. The, the machine was not working and nothing was going on. I see. We had to draw the attention of the EC that what is going on. So then they had to deploy some of the BVR equipment. Now that's six days gone. 
and, and many, it wasn't extended. no, it wasn't extended. There was no extension for anybody. The only extension was that those that were in the queue at 5 p.m. were given slips of paper and they came back the following, following day. And you know what happened in Tamale, where tax well-known identified that these are MPP people came and disrupted that process Why as well. They report them to the police. They reported these are all. So you, the, you reported the individuals to the police. Yes, they the were arrested. arrested them yes. Before. Yes. Were they arrested? Yes, they've been arrested. The, the, these are the things that we said, you arrest, but you must follow up and prosecute. prosecute the people and and if they are found culpable, you jail them. Okay, I, I see the point being made out there, but the, it's also the claim you made about those who could not retrieve their cards were a week more after the exercise. Yeah. How is this possible? I thought it was supposed to be instant each once, and when there was a problem within the space of your registration, you can't get no, a card. No, 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 no. You see, because they started with the VMS, mm -hmm. the VMS is both power based and internet based. Yeah. So when there's no power and the, and you see the system was designed to do continuous registration, yeah. the volumes. So once the system is broken and the problem was a data problem, you mm -hmm. see. It, the, 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 the volume of data that will move from the centers to the EC office, it was not designed for that. Oh, so once, and it's a process, you get your card at the end of the process. So if the process doesn't, and you do not get your card, and there were countless cases of that all across the country. Specifically, people who are still unable to retrieve cards today, even after the 1.2 million. Yes. Yes, of course, I don't have all the statistics, but as the exercise was going on, we were getting those reports that, I mean, we've done the registration, they've told us to come back for our cards, we don't have our cards. Which areas is this particular problem predominant? It's, it's, the district, specific district? I don't, I don't have, uh, when you're making accessions, you must, be, you must be on point. I don't have, but we have detailed returns. We get, we get daily reports from the field, from every single registration point. So now we ask people to travel to districts to go and register, mm -hmm. but they couldn't get their cards. Mm -hmm. So the expectation is that at some point in time they should be able to go get the cards. But should that happen in the first place? You put you put you put you put you put in place a system, for areas where the district offices are far you from put, where they live. Exactly. So you put in place a mechanism where if somebody travels from one place to the other, he comes, he spends a day, he gets his card, he goes. Yeah. But if you have a situation where the person has to go and come, go and come, look at the look at the cost of it. It affects productivity. Poor, ordinary Ghanaians. Were these isolated incidents across the various districts or they were widespread? They were widespread. They were part of the process. I see. Yes. They were part of the process. So that the, means but, that but there's a reason... see that even there. The, 1.10 million the, the, million the, but, there's, but there's a reason why it would be like that way. Because, first of all, the initial... The, the philosophy behind the registration was VMS. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, then, reluctantly, they added the, um, the VVR. VVR. Yeah. Okay. So, if the system has been designed that the VMS will be the primary source of generating these cards, and then, once it begins, there are difficulties, it will definitely affect the process flow, isn't it? Before now, reports will go, let's bring VVR here, let's move this from here. So, definitely, it will affect the flow. You make this point about the prisons, and I'm sure we all know that the Supreme Court had actually in a ruling said prisoners who are sound mind and qualified by all the criteria that every other person was supposed to be qualified by are actually qualified and have right, right to vote. You are insisting that some prison authorities were demanding only relatives guarantee for prisoners to be registered. Yes, yes. Now, even beyond the prisoners, when the process started, mm -hmm. when somebody registered today, and they wanted to guarantee for other people. Mm -hmm. It took us almost a week for us to have the EC clearly send directives to the officials that once the person has registered, the person has the right and has a card to guarantee. I'm telling you. But this is not the first time that has happened. Yeah, but I'm telling you this is what happened on the ground. In 2011, even, even, there's similar even, thing happened. Even, even when... So, are you saying it happened? No, I'm that saying that in 2011, good. people were allowed, uh -huh. just after registering, uh -huh. to actually be qualified to get with the same card that they took. Thank you. To, for their and I'm telling you, in 2019, it was a major problem. In fact, when the, the EC came to meet our flag brand, that was one of the major issues we put before them, that what kind of continuous monitoring system do they have? Mm. Because it appears that when once they deploy, there doesn't seem to be a proper... Um, uh, monitoring follow-up 
system such that when issues arise on the ground, they're able to resolve them quickly. This thing that I'm telling you, your, your viewers can attest to it, that all over, especially in Volta region, many parts of the country, it was a major challenge. So it became an issue of the discretion of some officers. So in some regions, uh, the, 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 the regional director or district director would agree. In other regions, they are waiting for instructions. And it took more than a week before that was also accepted. There's, however, a point you make about these observations that you made, the specific infractions or, if you like, the specific problems that were encountered across the various polling stations, well, the district offices in this particular case. You say, and it's in the statement, that these observations made across the country, especially in NDC strongholds, goes to vindicate our earlier suspicions of a possible collusion between some EC officials and the ruling party to suppress the process in our strongholds. Mm -hmm. Now first, you make the allegation that this is predominant in the NDC strongholds. Mm -hmm. How do you justify this? No, because based on the returns that we're getting, it was okay. You, you were in MPP strongholds too, so you're not recording no, this but, but, No, but we monitor. That's why we send people to monitor. So, for example, the infractions were not predominant in the Ashanti region. Where, the, where, for example, I'll give you a good So, in so Ashanti Volta, region. Hold on. Please, hold on. Mm -hmm. Volta region. Okay. First four days, no lights. And then later on, we are told that provisions were made for generators. Why did they not As part on? of budgetary allocations. Exactly. Yeah. Afterwards, why did they not extend on due delays? I've given you an example of whole West. And it happened all over. So, you, you realize that... In some places, and I, and I keep saying that perhaps I don't have any evidence to show that the EC at the top met and decided this. But on the ground, this is what was happening. These things were happening. We have documented them. We have recorded them. We have videos. There were confrontations. We have correspondence from our district officers, our uh, constituency officers. Details. So we are not just making these things. There was none happening happen. in the Ashanti region. We're saying that relatively based on the feedback that it was we more getting. predominant exactly. in the yes. ndc strongholds exactly. that's exactly what we've said we stand by it no, but i mean this observation you actually proceed to say you're saying that there's possible collusion between East possible read the and language. the ruling npp party. read the, read but the language regardless of the possible you said you're yeah. suggesting that something might have gone wrong between exactly. the two parties because how come? couldn't this have been done by the ec alone without the governing party it, being drawn into it oh, couldn't it also have been possible that it was done with them but that's why we said possibly but but you see when you as a big political party w yes bring in possible collusion yes and create the impression that the people might have done something wrong mm -hmm. and yet you don't provide any evidence to we back have this provided claim. more than enough evidence and your no, media no, no. So, house yes Hold i get on, you please, but please, i'm on please, specific please, please 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 okay please. i get you your media house mm -hmm. covered with issues that you know in the middle of the exercise mm -hmm. we issued a statement, if you remember. Yes, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. 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 And we gave details of all the things that we had seen. So, so we didn't just wait till the end of the exercise before we came out with this thing. So that we saw a certain pattern. And mm -hmm. you see, you see, there is something called pretending to be naive. Mm. Okay. And uh, one of my very, very good friends, he's, 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 he's part of this, your outfit. I won't mention his name. <laughs> I tell him, my friend, you are a very, very intelligent a media person but this question you are asking you are pretending to be naive no this because you see things happen okay mm -hmm. so why do we want to beat about the bush i am and actually pretend subjecting you to street pretend, proof in this case yes and pretend Who are the npp party officials and pretend that or party nothing, representatives nothing happens who and is then, suspect and then and then colluded with you, the you'll be asking Questions. But this is an important question. This is it, an important it question. Is, you have to is, answer the it, question. It is important. You why, are, you why, are, why, you are why? suspecting the NPP. Yeah, of course. Who specifically within the NPP? It is, okay. Yes. Good. Specific good, names. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. The Tescon uh, organizer. Is he from DPP or you, you, uh, LGP? You mean the one that you make reference to? Yes. 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 Where is he from? Is he not a Tescon? What is Tescon? Is the Tertiary Education Confederacy oh. of the NPP? Good. So that is a case study. And there are many, 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 many more. And I'm telling you that we have documented cases. That's why we're saying, ah, if, if it happens one year, two year, okay. But when you see a certain pattern, uh, consistent, that in your strongholds, you are seeing these delays 
which are not occurring in the same form, shape, and manner in other places. Okay, for example, deployment of uh, the BVR kits mm -hmm. is unfortunate. I I didn't get the, the. If you look at the deployment, mm -hmm. the Eastern Region had more kits than any other place. That's not based on um, need. Need. Yes. I see. I'm asking whether it was not based on need. Uh, maybe they told you based on need. No, what no, what no, is no. the but, but the only rational deployment of kits of this will be based on the need in the based on need. Yes. I see. So except based, sorry, <laughs> except you have any other reason to believe ah, but, that but this you, was you 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 are deploying kits. Yes. Uh, and we are seeing a certain pattern in Ashanti region, in Eastern region, you have a preponderance of kits which is disproportionate to whatever happens in any other area. And you want me to pretend that I'm naive. Okay, now, so for example, the Ashanti region has more voters than any other region in this country. Good. Right. Good. That's known. No. Not Ashanti no. region, highest number? No. Not at all? No. Greater Accra. Greater Accra is Ashanti region. So if disproportionately, uh, mm -hmm. based on the numbers, you see that Ashanti and Eastern have had more than Greater Accra, as a thinking person, but again, the Ashanti region has more people than the Greater Accra. Wouldn't, wouldn't you have, according to our population data? Which population center? Uh, uh, I'm talking about the check. Ghana Health. You are, you are no, no, Mr. Google. The Ghana Statistical you are, you are, you are, the, you are the Google man in this The house. Ghana Statistical Service you are the projections Google. You are for the, 2019. You are the Google. The Ashanti region has more I'm people that than the Greater Accra. Check. Region. You are the Google man. Check. Are yes. you disputing that so that check. I can provide you evidence? Check. I will provide it now. We are on live on air. Okay, don't worry. I actually will provide that. But your point you are making here is that. They distributed to certain areas and I'm saying more than they needed. Unfortunately, I've not said more than they needed. I choose my words carefully. Huh? Yes. Disproportionate. You know what disproportionate What does that even mean? mean? You don't understand it. What does it mean specifically it. in this you case? No, 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 no. But in this case, you have to tell me what oh, you mean by disproportionate. I'm saying that sometimes when you are doing an interview, you have to leave it to the judgment of your viewers. No, but in this case, I want you to explain to me they, what they, you they mean. They understand what I mean by disproportionate. Okay, so you, the your issue is made how, many of these, how many of these? I don't these? have the figures in front of me. Maybe if I got my phone, I probably will be able to. I mean, these are, these are statistics. Do you understand me? Yes. So I don't just come and throw figures. About. I'm saying everything that I'm saying here, I can provide you with concrete evidence, data. Because every day we get returns and we know, we monitor, we do tracking. I'll take a break here. After a break, we'll continue our conversation with the Director of Elections of the NDC. The NDC is demanding an IPAC meet to sort out many of the problems that we said they just ended voter registration exercise. You welcome back. This is Upfront. My guest today is the Director of Elections of the NDC. Now, the party has issued a statement demanding an urgent, urgent IPAC meeting with the Electoral Commission to iron out some problems which happened in the just-ended voter registration exercise. Of course, in their statement, they allege that some of the issues they've raised prior to the exercise or in the throes of the exercise, and yet they still happened and actually can be the result why we have what happened on the day. In fact, we've gone through the issues of delays, the issues of long queues, the issues of machines not working to power as they were supposed to be. And the other issues they are raising is in connection with why they feel that NDC strongholds were particularly unfairly treated in this particular case. And they also suspect possible collusion between the Electoral Commission and also some EC officials. Some EC officials, if that clarification is recorded in this particular case, and also NPP party officials in the conduct in this particular case. And Elvis Afrianka is my guest on this particular issue. So before we move on, now I've actually pulled out the projected districts from 2015 to 2020 from the Ghana Service. It stipulates clearly the population figures for the Ashanti to be 5.7 million. So 5792, then 187. This is 2019 total, male, female. When it comes to the greater Accra region, which is 4.943075. So it's settled that there are more people in the Ashanti than the greater Accra region. Okay, and I'm yes. saying that that's why I use the word disproportionate. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that if pro rata, you decide that because of the population of okay. Ashanti, yeah. I'm going to send 50. Mm -hmm then it must follow a certain logic and pattern. Mm. Then, then Greater Accra must get 40. Yeah. 
and then eastern region must get 30. I'm just using yes, those figures. Of course, oh, yes, depending now, on the... Uh, exactly. Yes. So if Ashanti then gets 60, and Greater Accra gets 25, that is disproportionate. Yeah, that makes and sense. It, yes, it gives I get you, you yeah. reason to question. Why they are doing so. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Again, um, I know you know, but for the sake of the interview, you will pretend you don't know. <laughs> when we talk about uh, rigging election or manipulating election, people think that it's only on election day or declaration. No. No, actually, a process There's leads the, to it. It's a process. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that that can be achieved is through suppression of votes. Yes. So, so votes can be suppressed in the strongholds of the opponent. And processes can be put in place to enhance votes in the strongholds it makes the, sense for example if you want to currently rig the election for the incumbent government what you can do is make sure that more people register in the ashanti region so since the mpp predominates in the ashanti region if more people are registering in that particular region the tendency of having more mpp voters in that particular population is high okay now on the other side if you suppress voters in the voter region for instance you are likely to have more people who would have voted for the ndc not registering in the first place okay so you know book very well. Now <laughs> I give you I give you a very recent example. Mm. So Iowa so West Wagon. Mm -hmm. What happens early in the morning? Gunshots in the stronghold yeah, of where the NDC consistently. You know I contested more. in yes. two thousand there, yeah, so yeah, I know yeah. that place very. Baleshi, Okonglo, Mempasem, those are the places that have a concentration of NDC votes. Yeah. By that action, they were able to prevent NDC people from coming out to vote. So you see, we are not just talking. We know what we are talking about. This is election. And we've been at this game for long. Okay, th that's an interesting development in this particular case. So, are these things that you drew the attention of the Electoral Commission to, did they try to amend the situation? But, but the ones try? that were so clear before the process, mm -hmm. were telling them and telling in them... In the throes of the they, process, they, you they, even issued a statement on exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so... Did they rectify some of them? Well, well, um, half-heartedly, a little bit. Le let me say this. When we met the electoral commission uh, when they called on our flag bearer mm -hmm. we were very blunt and direct to them we said look um you 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 are doing this is how you should have started you know because you came in and in very indecent haste you were you, you are independent you can do what you want you won't listen to anybody you are by law so the general secretary asked a very poignant question he said you are here you're calling on our flag bearer where in your law does it say that you should consult stakeholders? Because you are independent. You are backed by law. Yeah, that's true. But you recognize that there are critical stakeholders. And you need the collaboration of the stakeholders in order for your work to be successful. That's so if today you've come to the realization that, look, perhaps this is how we should have gone. No problem. We are ready to give you the benefit of the doubt. And if you continue to do things in this manner we'll collaborate with you to be fair look at all the issues that we've been raising consistently assuming the ec had listened to us don't you think we would have had a better process and system? don't you also think that this ec has on the back of his mind that well some people within the ndc actually opposed uh appointment so 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 but but uh -huh. this is a grouping that is out there to get us so so if somebody is giving you sensible reasonable things that would even enhance your work i kept telling them that even when you do the pro it will even inure to the benefit of the mpp don't you think they are questioning the motive for the proposal but, but any down. reasonable person when you are given that's why we all went to school now mm -hmm. when you somebody tells you something you, you independently do, evaluate you, exactly yeah. you do the analysis so you don't say because it's coming from here, I won't listen, and then you go and fall into the, 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 the same trap. I, I just keep asking myself. So assuming, and some of you in the media were not, you, you, your posture and the way you were questioning us, as if, why are you giving the EC trouble? What? Assuming we had not been insistent and they had gone to do this, their 250 district officers, which they insisted on for four to five weeks consistently. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what would have happened? Well, it would have been chaotic. Numbers, so the issues, I, I keep on saying, look at the issues that we are raising. Does it make sense? You've asked very critical questions. Mm -hmm. That is how it's supposed to be. Beyond that, go and do your own independent check. We said that the population is 1.752 million. You said 
300,000. Nobody asked the EC, why are you shifting from 300,000, 500,000, 700,000? Nobody asked them. So they get away with it. But if somebody had drawn the answer, look, this cannot go on. You cannot say 500, 300, 500, because in previous registrations, the, 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 the basis is on the figures from the statistical service. Then they'll sit up. So these are national issues. If anybody raises them and there is merit in them, let's look at it from that perspective. Now, there's a question about, so when they convey the IPAC meeting, what really are you seeking to ask them to do? That let's correct these matters before we go into the next limited registration exercise because there's bound to be one next year too, right? Obviously. Obviously. I mean, we should perfect our system. So yeah. if in um, 2014... We had a target of 1 million and we hit over 80%. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, we had a target of 1.2 million and we hit over 90%. And in 2019, we, we couldn't target properly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So we, we missed the target ab initio. But eventually, what we did it would turn out to be less than 70%. Okay. It means we are not making, we are retrogressing. Yeah. So, what are the corrective measures that can be put in place to ensure that these things don't happen? How do we ensure that all these inconveniences do not recur? How do we improve security? You know, so, so it becomes a learning tool for all of us so that we improve our, upon our system. I, I was ashamed and embarrassed when the Senegalese told us, look, you people, when, when, when there's an election year, there is no problem. Normal day. Everybody goes to vote. Life is normal. Here, and now that they've introduced all this, uh, what do you call them, Gra? Those people who wear the mask. Quick mosquito, mosquito people. Uh, what, oh, what the SWAT there? team of uh, the National uh, Security. Uh, they were SWAT. Oh, mosquito, but mosquito. that is the name given to the team. Recently, they were very successful in aiding us get the Canadian girls back. You want us to go there? You don't believe that? You want us you to go there? You don't believe that? Oh, that's a joke. Hey, but they were the one on the ground. Do you to oh, see them? Oh, my, my friend forgets. Oh, you saw you see, videos of people. What is your for, doubt? Don't forget that, eh? Yes. We have been in government, though. Okay. Did you have a SWAT team at your time? Yeah, we had a SWAT team. Yes. Huh? And they were a proper SWAT team. Not the SWAT team that will come to a commission and the IGP and police commanders say they don't know them. And you are saying this is a SWAT team. Because they are commanded And they by said the they were security. trained two weeks. As a teacher, you call that a, a, a SWAT team? Uh, let's not go there. Of course, they this might have had some bad sides team. at the commission. But bad, to, what the to, bad, to, bad side? You to, train to be, these to be fair. thugs. For two weeks, and you deploy them, you release them. They're unleashing mayhem on people. For me, Ayawa so West were going to cross the line for me. It, it, it was an insult to our collective dignity. It was as if the impunity, look, we will do whatever we want to do. You can go to hell. Really? Because if even this were happening in some village, so we've all been in by-elections. Things happen, but not at this scale. When the brazen yes, because we know trip on it happened. The brazen we know people shot hey, in the air. We have videos when, of when it. When it comes to that, that one, you're... Blah, 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 no, but you, 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 you said it's happening before. I'm giving you examples of what has yes, happened Yes, and I'm saying that those people, yes. they were civilians. Ordinary people, but they were part of the security apparatus. This is the first time that we were seeing people giving official vehicles, dressed in official garb, carrying AK-47, and... Craig, come on. How do you, how do you compare this? And, and then the IGP... Says he doesn't know anything about it. You know the implications? So there's a private army, private militia being controlled, being funded by the state, and it's not known to the head of the security services. You know the implications of that? And they, they, they beat up people with brazen F1 tree, firing guns, beating up people. And to date, to date, as we sit here, the report has not been released. And we are going around thinking that, oh, everything is fine. But to be fair, the time has not elapsed. The man has yeah, right. six months to do it. Yeah, right. Time. Yeah, right. Yes. So that's, he still has some yeah, time go to ahead. decide on it. Go ahead. But you know that, right? The day, the you, day, you, you know that. The day, this was the MPP will report. lose power in 2020. Yes. Eh? Part of the reason will be some journalists refused to tell the king that he was naked. But that will be part of the reason. But why are you saying because, this on my show now? Because I. Oh, but I'm on, I can only say it on the media. I didn't say you. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Eh? So no, so I that's some. <laughs> so Me some, not inclusive. I didn't say that too. <laughs> <laughs> we must learn to You see, I, I'll give you a Let me come to sports. Eh? As we sit here today, mm -hmm. we don't know the budget for the Cup of Nations. Eh, yes. I'm sitting there. Eh? Did in, you know your time, own for yes, the World Cup one? Yes. Was it published ahead of you it, going listen there? Listen and listen carefully. Listen. Even before we went to the World Cup, 
all kinds of speculations. Hey, 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 hey. So I said, look, the budget has not been approved. It has to go through a process and it to be approved by cabinet. Mm -hmm. Immediately cabinet approved it, I called the media, Ministry of Information, PowerPoint. I put it on the screen, line by line. They were not interested. Don't I just say how if you are ah, done? But but you people said if, if, I, the man will chop the money. <laughs> oh Ghana, <laughs> will chop the money. Some said I was going to siphon the money for presidential candidates. There is foolishness in this land, though. <clears throat> so I put it on the screen, PowerPoint, line by line, went through. Oh, we're not interested, you know. And today, mm -hmm. eh, we don't know the budgets, and. Everybody is quiet. Oh no, people are asking for it. Oh. I've heard my colleagues oh. in, on, in this on the sports they say that why is it that we don't know the budget for it? How much have we spent? Who's accounting to us on that? Those feeble, feeble questions. How is that feeble? I thought the same questions I say were asked you when you were a minister at the time. Supported. No, 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 no. Those are not when, the same questions. When one regime, the, the the kinds of things that have happened under this regime, huh? Mm -hmm. And the posturing of some sections of the media, it's it's shameful. Really? Let's all remember that one day we will die and go to heaven and God will ask us. The profession you've chosen is your call. It's not only priests who will be judged, though. No, th th there's a question about, and of course, this is a very important, today's a very important day, too. We should remember yeah. that the John Evans Tamil's memorial lecture is currently happening as we sit here. Mm -hmm. Now, you were close with the man mm -hmm. years after his demise. What does such days bring to you? Oh. My goodness, um, mixed feelings, um, nostalgia. You know, Prof was a different kind of person, honestly. Mm. He was unique in his own right. Honest to a fault, a patriot committed to this country. All he wanted was for this country to move to the next level. And he used to say something in Fanti, which he meant. Mm. You know, when people were interested in money and all. I'm a medan member crow, mayor crow, I'm a cast, Mizzy Abadi. And that was a genuine, if you want to know prof, that's prof for you. Mm. He didn't care about all these material things, focused on the national agenda. So on a day like this, you remember him, fond memories, great man, you know, um, you go and tell him. A lie about somebody. Hey, eh, is that so? Okay. Um, can you come back? Mm -hmm. You come back, and <laughs> when you come, the person that you went to talk about is sitting there. Hey, you were telling me something. Uh, can you? <laughs> so he didn't encourage gossip, backbiting. These are the things that destroy regimes. Okay. You know, internal, the internal backbiting and backstabbing and pulling. You know, so. It was it was it was a great person to be with, and um, I believe that there's something that we can all learn from him. His decency, he brought decency into the politics. Mm -hmm. um, people talk about him, um, father for all that he tried to bring all of us together, you know. But um, I was an apostle of father for all, but uh, I don't think there will be father for all. There should be justice for all. What does forward. that even mean? I mean, I thought the father for our approach was that a unified state, mm. the leader has everybody within, whether you are within his political party or mm. not, whether you agree with him on what he says or mm. what he does or yeah, not, yeah. you still are under yeah, his remit yeah. and you are treated fairly yeah. and in a just manner in all forms. Yeah. So, Is that not how so, the father so for all? justice for all. It covers all. I don't get your point. Uh, hey, your, yes. your viewers get it all. I see. I get, I get the point that you want to make in this in this particular case. So, but have you proposed a date for the AC to set up the uh, what they call a meeting? You no, know, we 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 thrown it to them. They should set up. We just came back from well, Algeria, so I'm sure they'll settle down. In the and and find a particular day to deal with the yeah. matters. Are you certain? But what has happened prior to the voter registration exercise, going into the voter registration exercise, and after this particular exercise, the exchanges with the NDC and the, and the other group pages that have actually spoken about the conduct of the EC in this particular case, that it is in poor position to deliver a credible 2020 election? So it's like um, going into a match, and uh, before the match, the referee has conducted in a way that doesn't give you confidence. Okay. 
so um, statements. I, I don't want to go back. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, President Mahama told us, look, water under the bridge. Because mm -hmm. we raised a lot of number of issues, you know. Mm -hmm. You say the NDC is not credible. It's a threat to democracy. We, we don't want to go into all that. It's, and President Mahama said, look, water under the bridge. So to be fair, I would dare say that perhaps there is an effort to try. Mm -hmm. And any honest, decent person would want to give the other person the benefit of the doubt. Bearing in mind that the issues we raised, if they will be very honest okay. and sincere, they will realize that they were not out of malice. Okay. It's played out that we actually had even their own institution at heart and the country at heart. Perhaps the way and manner in which it all went about. I mean, you know, people have egos and all that. But going forward, you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. So, okay. like the referee, you are, you, are not, you are not comfortable. However, the referee then meets you and says, look, um, there's been some tensions, but I want to assure you that this match, I'm going to conduct it in a very, very transparent manner. You may still have your doubts, and okay. you want to give the referee the benefit of the doubt. And then as the match proceeds, you watch. Of course, the referee disallows an obvious goal, like mm -hmm. happened recently. You won't say because the person gave you assurance, so irrespective of the facts in front On of the you. Ground, you However, still in the, exactly, yeah. you, you give the benefit give of the doubt. doubt and allow the process to go on. And then they should also realize that whatever issues that we raise, they are meant to enhance the entire electoral process and not to bring Honorable Elvis Anka, thank you so much for joining us here today. You have not been interested in going back to Parliament. No. Not at all. No. Okay, well, thank you so much. Maybe in the future we'll be asking <laughs> one, all of these questions. But I appreciate you coming in here today. Okay, thank you so much. Folks, that's where we end today's edition of Upfront. My guest, the Honorable Elvis Anka, is the Director of Elections of the NDC. We spoke about sports too, if you do remember. <laughs>